don't deny it the church is suffering less than expected much more than expected the church is suffering the christians are suffering more than sinners almost all the bank in the nation belong to sinners almost the best hotels belong to those who don't go to church marriott you know who owns it you know the owners of marriott mormon they own marriott they make millions a day millions a day billions a year i have not seen one hotel yet where the proprietor speak in tongue if there are maybe very few and if there are it's going to be very small because christians don't believe in big things they serve a big god and do small things and that's an insult to god because the devil is not as good as god as a matter of fact there's nothing good in the devil and there's nothing bad in god and with god all things are possible and all things are possible to him that believe it i write that i said i said me i am i can become a possibilitarian i can stop failing and start succeeding if i can change the gear of my faith vehicle if i can stop driving backward and start to drive forward if i can accelerate in the front if my own gear can move to the gear of the speed of faith of believing if i can stop talking downward and start talking upward if i can start to say the good thing and not the bad things anymore if i can stop singing poor songs and begin to sing faith songs if i begin to call myself a child of the living god instead of a child of failure of disappointment if i begin to look unto god instead of looking to my country because the gov the bible did not say the government shall supply all your needs the bible said my god my own god the one i serve shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory and when i read that place according to his riches in glory i knew that there's no poverty in glory somebody will say hallelujah if you love god i know some of you love caricature message but i don't have one you're looking for messages that say hold on the lord will soon come <laughs> be patient with your suffering when jesus come you're no more going to suffer it's a lie of the devil from hell Amen. jesus became poor that we through his poverty may become rich Amen. jesus died that your suffering might stop Amen. jesus became the one that paid price for my sickness and disease and sin and many times we have accepted the god that forgives sin we forget we forget and we refuse to accept the god that bless people and when we see somebody prosperous in christianity you begin to think is he still a christian as if the symbol of righteousness is iniquity and setback the sign of holiness is not poverty as a matter of fact poverty is a disgrace to god because god's word said in third john 2 i wish above all things that thou say me may prosper be in hell even as my soul prospered somebody shout hallelujah don't only prosper in soul prosper in spirit prosper in job prosper at home prosper in business prosper in town prosper everywhere prosper in the name of jesus prosper somebody say hallelujah the bible says you shall be the head and not the tail the bible says you shall be a lender and not a borrower the bible says you shall be blessed when you go out i say you shall be blessed when you come in you shall be blessed when you lie down you shall be blessed when you rise up say i'm blessed somebody shout hallelujah take the curse out of your head remove the curse from your head stop only liking bad things what a shame when christians hear their sales in, in, in kmart they are the first to be there sales jc penny they are the first to be there sales in any more christians are the first to be there why they don't believe they, they deserve good thing they are only qualified they are poverty oriented they have been taught the poorer they are the nearer they are to god whereas poverty is a disgrace to god 
How can your heavenly father have everything and you have nothing? How can your God be Alpha and Omega and you are nothing? How can your God say, the silver am I, the gold am I, the thousand cattle on the hilltop and the hill where the cattle is standing belong to my God? Yeah. And you have nothing on earth. It's a trick of the devil for you to think. The poorer you are, the holier you become. That's not true. I say that's not true. <laughs> say hallelujah. hallelujah. Just eat the word. When I preach it, you swallow it. When I preach it, you swallow it. Yeah. If you love the Lord, wave your hand. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So I read this scripture. And then one day, I read the book of Revelation. Behold, I set before thee an open door. And he said, no man can shut it. So I said to myself, what can I do if I know I wouldn't fail? What could you do if you know you couldn't fail? What could you do if you know you couldn't fail? How many miles can you go if you know there's money to, to go there? How many houses can you build if you know God will provide you the money? I began to ask myself, Idahusa, what could you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And God said, All things. Somebody say, All things. All things. So when preachers come to me in Africa and say, Bro, things are very down. Um, there's no money here. I say, I wish your God and my God were the same. Because if the God that I serve is the one you serve, with my own God, all things are possible. If the God that I know is the one you know, you are the head and not the tail. Amen. You are blessed and not cursed. Yes. And guess what? I began to teach my people to cancel the curse out of their head. Because Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. There's no Christian that's under the bondage of the enslavement that the devil tried to put you in. If you believe that silver belongs to God, God doesn't use silver. If you believe that gold belongs to God, God doesn't use gold. If you believe that the thousand cattle on the hilltop below Heavenly Father, God does not eat beef. So who does he have all these things for? Say me. me. Somebody say me. me. Say I. I. We have been so talked out of blessing. And the only good song we know how to sing is suffering song. We have been so oriented by sinners to believe that we have no right to have access to our father's treasure. And Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And many of you have key, but you don't know where the door is. So you are living in hunger and starvation and nakedness. And you hearing me here in Nigeria. And you hearing me anywhere. You are hearing me in Africa now. Or in England. Your suffering would have been gone long ago. If you believe what I'm saying tonight. That your heavenly father owns everything. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The money in this bank, in this world. Come from your heavenly father. Government is not the owner of everything. God is the owner of everything. So what did I do? The first thing I did was to take my name out of the list of those who are cursed. Amen. Somebody didn't hear me. I removed my name from the list of those who were cursed. I took my name out of the list of those who are not prospering. And the Bible said, be it unto you according to your faith. So I said to myself, from now, my faith is that I'm good. Say, I'm good. I'm, good. I'm, on, top. I'm on top. I'm not at the bottom. I'm, not at the bottom. I'm, the, head. I'm the head. Not the tail. I'm, the I'm in the front. I'm the front. Not at the back. I'm the I am blessed. I'm, I'm not cursed. I'm the, Lord the Lord is my shepherd. That's all I need. All I need. Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. I who was the president 
of poverty associates. I removed my name. I, who was the chairman of Have Nothing Incorporated, I removed my name. I, who was the chief of all sinners, I took my name away. And I said, God, whatever faith it takes to be well, I'm going to be well. Amen. Whatever faith it takes to bless the poor, I am not going to be the poor, I'm going to be the one blessing the poor. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Then I heard, then I heard that the righteous shall flourish. Yeah. So I said, God, I am tired of having little things. I want to flourish. Amen. And the Lord said, if you hold me and I hold you, you will flourish. So for 32 years now, I grabbed God's trouser. And for the last 17 years, I refused to let him go. And I began to believe that my God is not as small as the government. Amen. 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 My God is not as small as the biggest bank in the world. Amen. With bank, many things cannot be done. But with my God, all things are possible. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. And I began to learn lessons on how to live righteous life. On how to make Christ the strength of my life. And I began to learn the lesson that Paul learned when Paul said, it is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I began to take God to my street people. I began to take this God I'm talking to you about tonight. To the blind. And they began to see. Amen. To the lame. And they began to walk. Amen. To the deaf. And they began to hear. Amen. To the weak. And they became strong. Amen. To the downtrodden. And God began to lift them up. Yes. Then the day I read. The Lord is the lifter of my head. Yes. He is the lifter of my head. Yes. God is the lifter of my head. Yes. I said God is the lifter of my head. Yes. I began to sing a new song. I began to tell myself the things that are impossible with men is possible with God. Yeah. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Yeah. I began to think right. Yes. I began to wish myself good. No matter what you wish me, I wish myself good. Yeah. No matter how you look at me, I look at myself as beautiful. Yeah. And I began to find in the Bible how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Yeah. So I began to wear good shoes instead of bad shoes. I began to read in the Bible. You shall worship God in the beauty of his holiness. Yes. So I began to pull off my old poor garment. And began to worship God in the beauty of his holiness. Hallelujah. I said this is too beautiful to be ugly. Because God did a perfect work in her life. Hallelujah. And this man is too handsome to look ugly. You say you are from Africa. Africa is where the ark went to. That's why we are called ark. Africa. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Ark of Promise is now in Africa. Ark Africa. Right. So nobody from Africa should miss the Ark of Promise. So I began to tell myself, I'm going to be the head and not the tail. Yeah. Then one night, Pastor Milton, God says, son, do you know why you have small things? I said, no. He said, because you don't believe in big things. I said, I do. He said, no, show me one big thing you've done. I look around my whole life, not one. <laughs> then I read this scripture I want to read to you tonight. Are you ready for it? Amen. Ephesians 3. Lo grosso ye hebra mata, lo grosso yo do. Le moro boha parasa ye hekele. Bando mo hi prosso yo do do. Ephesians 3. I say, is any pastor blessed already? Yeah. Is anybody ready to set new goal yet? Yeah. Say, ah! ah! Is any believer ready to start a new life yet? Yeah. Say, ah! ah! Uh. And I read this one. Ephesians 3.17 That Christ may dwell 
in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and width and height verse 19 and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled that ye might be filled that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God Pastor Wittenberg we serve a full God I'm a child of the God of fullness full in health full in joy full in prosperity full in abundance full of miracles full of surprises full of upwardness full in whatever i lay my hand to do that god may fill your heart with the fullness of god somebody shout hallelujah so i took my name out of the list of those who have nothing first of all I understood for the first time 17 years ago for the first time 17 years ago for the first time I read that the Bible said that Christ may dwell in my heart not poverty to dwell in my heart Where there's no Christ, there are crises. But where there is Christ, there's no crisis. That Christ may dwell in my own heart. So I said, all the poverty I've been thinking, where has it come from? Not from God. God never tells you you are going to be sick. God never tells you you are going to be down. God never tells you you are going to be weak. God never tells you that. God, the Bible says, 